and welcome everyone to today's video. So we'll be taking a look at the updated Extreme Battler deck, but it's going to be a lot faster this time because I did this deck profile really not that long ago. So because a lot of the cards have already been shown and explained in the previous video, I'm going to link in the description, you can check it out. So I'm going to go over all the cards that have already been there and a lot of the deck has not changed, just a bit of the triggers. And I'm also in the middle of exam season, so I can't really take too long to make this either. So I'm going to keep it pretty quick. And also, I'm going to keep the standard of showing the card that I'm talking about on the side here. So on the, the starter we have is Runball. So Runball, basically, when something stands in front of him, he stands as well. Good starter, very important for combos, stuff like that. We we'll play, again, four Victors. Victor's a really good card. His on strike skill lets him stand a rear guard when you attack and give it plus 5k and his GB2 when you attack also stands another rear guard and gives it plus 5k. So I'm going to be going over the effects pretty fast as I said. Let me just put the cards over here. Next up we have Crystal Devil. So again, I did have this in my previous deck profile as well. Crystal Devil is really good. He synergizes really well with one of the new stand triggers. Well, not really new anymore, but one of the latest stand triggers. and he can get really amazing combos and the combo video is actually coming next week so stay tuned for that so crystal devil is really really nice as a backup grade 3 especially after you've already gotten gb1 next up we have four arbor rails arbor rail is the um glimmer breath clone so when you call it count plus one soul plus one and he gets plus 2k and the skill that when he attacks you can stand a rear guard and give it plus 5k if your vanguard is a victor so good thing really good grade 2 it's like a lot of Gloom Breath clones lately have been amazing, and this is definitely one of them as well. One of the key cards for the deck is Extreme Battler Sazanda. What the basically when it gets stood by an effect, he gets plus 5k on his own, and then he usually gets plus 5k for another effect, so it's really good. So I'm just gonna move these up a bit because I checked that the camera is not exactly showing these. Okay, so basically when when you ride Crystal Devil, you can give Sazanda the skill that after the end after it has attacked, it can stand a plus 2k, so it'll be 11 on its own. And then any plus 5 is a guess will be like 16, 21, and that's a really, really nice. So I really like the little power it adds, and I think it's really important for the deck. And obviously Sazanda is really important, but this deck is gonna take a really big hit after Kagero gets support because Denial Griffin really hurts this. It doesn't the deck doesn't have many ways to play against Kagero or Link Joker as well. So actually no, Link Joker is quite fine against. Link Joker is a pretty fine matchup, but Kagero is going to be a big problem. As I was saying before, I knocked off my own camera. I like how the sun is shining on the Hashidan side and there's like nothing on the north side. But anyway, to continue with the deck profile, we have four cool Hanks. He's the Amber Clone. When he attacks and he's boosted on GB1, he attacks Vanger. You can almost one standard rear guard and give you plus 5k. So simple stuff, good stuff. Again, so far the deck profile is the exact same as it was before. So there's nothing too much of the new stuff here. Four stride fodders because the deck does really rely on stride. It's very stride reliant, so we do max the stride fodders. Uh, we play four Malayaki. I've explained Malayaki before. Basically, when something stands on the same column as this, it will get the skill that when it attacks, you can buff two units by plus four each. And every time it stands in front of this unit, the skill stacks. So basically, you can give first time you give two times plus four, second time you give four times plus four, and then eight times, and so on. So four Malayakis because it's a really, really good card. You can play it at three at times, like some people I've seen play three, but I prefer four. My backup grade one is Kuma the Destroyer. He's basically a Sazanda. Basically when he stands due to an effect, he gets plus 5k as a skill, but it stacks as well. So it's like, it's basically the same thing. And like, yes, he is 7k, but if you have Malayaki to give him a plus four, he basically turns 11k attacker. So. It's really not a big deal, and I do like to have a backup Sazanda, essentially. Perfect RGs, because the deck is ins insanely counterblast reliant, so Perfect RGs are really important. This stand, like I said, has a lot of good synergy with uh, Crystal Devil, because with Crystal Devil's first skill, you can choose a unit with Rush, and give it the skill that, at the end of the battle, that attacks Vanguard, it stands again. So basically, you choose Sazanda with the Referee, and give it the Rush skill to basically Every time it stands, it gets plus five, plus five, so it gets even more power and has a rush skill. And then with Crystal Devil, you give him that skill to basically restand after it attacked because it now has rush thanks to the sand trigger, so that's why we still run this. Otherwise, I would max uh, Energy Girl. Her skill is when after she boosted, you can put her back to deck and stand one of your rear guards. She's really good as well, but I really like the stuff that Perfect Referee gives you. Four heals because G Guardians are a thing and also because four heals is literally always mandatory. And then I play four draws because the deck does need the draw power. 
in i've kind of been dropping draws in a lot of decks but this is one of the few decks that i'm kind of still keeping them in and finally three crit uh you can my trigger lineups tend to be wonky you can play less stands to play more crits you can play less draws uh maybe to play more crits but i switch it to red lightning uh we did not have this last time so red lightning skill is you can put in the soul if your vanguard is an over grappler if you do you unflip one of your damage so you kind of charge one so i found this to be a lot more useful than the victor crit because the victor crit gave me a draw and some power but it wasn't that needed in this deck meanwhile the counter charging is much more necessary so now i have the crit and the perfect guard to give me a bit of counter charge in the deck you could run Kaleido mechanic in the two slot or yeah mostly Kaleido mechanic you can put in here but i prefer kuma but apart from that, that's pretty much what the deck looks like. It's pretty much the same as it was before, except for the Red Lightnings. So if you want a better in-depth explanation of each skill, go check out the previous Victor deck profile. It will be in the description. But now let's get on to the G-Zone, where there are some new things that, do, that I do have to explain. All right, so starting off, we have the four brand new Meteor Kaiser Bustards. So this time I will quickly zoom in on his skill. His skill is an auto. Once per turn, when he attacks, you can count as one and flip any G unit face up. If you do, you choose the same number of your regards as the number of bustards face up in your G zone and stand them. And if two or more units were stood by this effect alone, not counting, like let's say use his effect to stand, I don't know, a victor. Like, so let's say use his effect to stand a victor, and then through run ball skill, this will stand. That would not count as two. It only counts its own skills, so pay good attention to that. Also, this sun is letting me show off the, the foiling. <laughs> but anyway, as I was saying, if two or more units were stood, if you have five rear guards, until, if you have basically a full field, then until in the battle, this unit gets the skill to basically, at the end of the battle, you can come as one and ditch two cards from your hand. If you do, he stands again. So basically, he is a Victoplasma combined with I don't know, Victor, I guess you could say, because essentially he stands himself and he stands your whole field. So it's really nice and I really like him. He kind of dies in the Link Joker matchup though, unless you use him really early. But I really love what he brings to the deck. He's a much, he's a really good first stride. He's definitely going to be your first stride most of the time. Uh, he does eat up more Counter Blast because essentially his skill is Counter Blast 2 if you do the use the restand. But if you don't, then it's just a Counter Blast 1. But I really like him as a first stride. Unless you G Guard first, then you could use this as a first stride, which is Meteor Kaiser Victor. Again, we already went through his skill last time. I play four of him. Essentially, he has two skills, uh, which are unlocked through Persona Blasting. And then once you've Persona Blasted in the main phase, when you attack, if you're on GB3, you can stand a card and give it plus 5k. And then if you hit, you stand a card and give it plus 5k. So it's it's good. It's good. The on hit is always not that great, but it's good. Next up we have Meteor Kaiser Victor Plasma. Uh, again, we had the we had him in the previous deck profile. This skill is Kamas 2 and Persona Flip, and he loses a drive check. And also you have to have had one face-up G unit before you use him. And then at the end of the ability attack, you can ditch two cards and restand him. So it essentially gives you four drive checks, while Bustard gives you also four, but he gives three at the start and one at the end. I'm not sure if I mentioned that actually, that he loses he loses two drive checks. Uh, when I was going your skill, but yes, he loses two drive checks. That is very important. Next up, we have Meteor Kaiser Tri Brute. He's a little bit of field control. Basically, when a unit stands due to an effect, you can give it plus 2k, and then Counter Blast 1, you may Counter Blast 1, and retire an opponent's rear guard that has less power than the unit that stood. So if you stand something and it goes up to 14k, you're gonna be retiring basically everything. Next up we play one Sabreeze. This is a new card that was not in the previous uh, deck profile, so let's go over it. So Sabreeze is the anti gray 2 stall card, stride thing, and basically when your vanguard is a grade 3 and you have no face up G units and your opponent's vanguard is a grade 2 and they did not ride in the previous turn, they can come as 2 and discard a card from hand to, ride, to stride this card. Like I mentioned in my Diablo deck profile, you can discard anything to stride him, so it's not necessarily the grade 3 stuff, you can discard a draw trigger or something. So. Basically, we run so many generation break units in this deck, so we must run Sabreeze because otherwise, we're, if we get great stuck, like if the opponent just sticks on grade two and we don't have Sabreeze, then we're pretty much screwed. Now for the G Guardians, we like I've mentioned in the G Guardian video, I do run just four because we have a lot of really good strides in here. Oh, also, I didn't mention Victoplasma is your basically your option, your answer to Link Joker because 
uh, especially Chaos, because Chaos is going to be using up a lot of... They're going to lose a card in hand in order to lock your stuff after they ride Chaos Breaker. So if you have the first stride and you can basically punch them in the face a bit, do a bit of cool combos and rush them to like four or something, then if they, even if they lock most of your field, you can go into Victoplasma and try to go for game. So it's uh, it's your answer to that. But now moving on to the G Guardians, first off we have Righteous Superhuman Blue Prison. So when you guard with him, if you have more or equal damage than your opponent, he gets plus 5k shield. He is one of the my least favorite G Guardians, honestly, not in terms of design, but in terms of effect, because he did relies on how much damage your opponent has and how much you have and that's kind of i really don't like that factor i think relying on field is more fair than this but we do run one because the 20k shield can come really really in handy sometimes so i do prefer to just straight up go for the 20k shield when possible sometimes you get early rushed so this becomes effective immediately Next up we run two Dismals. Dismal's skill is when you guard with her, you can choose one of your regards and until end of turn that unit cannot be hit and cannot be chosen by the effects of your opponent's cards. And on top of that she has resist or he. I don't know the gender of this this exact card, but um this is a really good card because you want to protect your Sazandas. You really want to protect your Sazandas from getting destroyed. So you can guard with a Dismal, even if you're guarding a Vanguard, just to choose the Sazanda to not be destroyed or targeted by effects. But if it's a global effect, then it's gonna hit regardless. And finally, we have Metal Element Screw. Screw's effect is when you guard with it, if you have at least one face up G unit, then you can discard a card to get plus 10k shield. I only run one screw simply because the deck does not make that much hand advantage. You lose quite a lot of hand and also, okay, like, I run draws so I can convert the draws into 10k shields, but don't forget that you first have to have a face up G, G unit before you can use this. So either you G-guard with something else first, or you must have Stridden first, so you cannot use this immediately unless uh, you only want the 15k shield. So, but if you want the 15k shield, like I would rather just go for this or the Dismal, you know, like you have a lot of better options. But this is my G-zone lineup, and like I said earlier in the video, I will be trying to get the combo video out next week. Finally, it's coming. Um, I'm planning more combo videos for other clans. They will definitely not take as long as it did for Nova Grappler. But yeah, that's pretty much all I have to say for Nova Grappler. So again, like I've said quite a few times now, if you want a more in-depth explanation of each of the skills that were shown in this video that were already in the previous one, go watch the previous video. It will definitely tell you about all the new things. But this deck is very, very strong. Um, it's not as budget as it used to be because this doesn't cost that much, but it's the addition of Buster that really put the deck's price up, I think. Um, apart from that, it's actually, it's still pretty affordable, but it's not as cheap as it used to be, because in the previous deck profile I said that this deck is definitely a lot of more affordable than other decks in the format, and it's definitely very viable, but with the Rise of Kagero, it's not going to be as strong as it used to be. But that's pretty much all I have to say about this deck. Uh, yeah, like I said before, stay tuned for the combo video. And that's pretty much it for me. I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.